we are going to consider a very simplistic kind of a model. Let us say like an ant or a, or a bug or an insect which decides how to make its next move based on where its friends are because the friends have some you know hint about where the sugar cube is. So, they send the, some of these information over the network and these ants or whatever they make their moves based on that. So, what is the basic model going to be? If I represent p i is equal to say x i y i okay, as the position of the ith ant right. Then the dynamics is going to look something like this summation p j minus p i such that this notation means that j is listening or rather i is listening to j. In other words, j is a neighbor of i. In graph theoretic language, there is an edge connecting the ith node to the jth node. If I am not even connected to you, if I do not know what you think, how am I going to be influenced by your opinion, right? If I am always mouthing my opinions throughout the day on radio, TV, everywhere, right? Then you get to hear my opinion. I never get any feedback from you, right? So unlike that, in this case, J and I are neighbors means both of them listen to each other's opinions because it is an undirected graph that we have in mind. Is this clear why this is a logical way to formulate such dynamics? No, it is not J tilde. This is a notation. J is a neighbor of I. J is a neighbor of I. Means there is an edge connecting J with I. It is a graph theoretic notation. It is something new. Not, not Do not blame yourself if you do not understand this because we never explained this in linear algebra. It is a graph theoretic notation. I right, am introducing it now. Now, just think about it. What does this mean? I mean, I can decouple the dynamics along the x and the y directions. I can just say x i dot is equal to x j minus x i summation and y i dot is equal to y i y j minus y i summation. So, those dynamics are completely decoupled. I might just look at the single differential equation in terms of x's or the y's. It does not matter, right? So, what does this eventually lead to? Does this tell you there is something going on? What is this? I put it to you that if I stack up all these p i's together like p 1, p 2 until p n, yeah, this is a stacked up position of all the n agents. This is a 2 n sized vector, right? Then what is this? p dot is not it equal to minus Laplacian times p? Yeah, because this is what the Laplacian is. That is why we were so invested in the Laplacian. It helps us in grasping this idea. What is this? If I stack this up, this is basically, this is basically say p1 minus pi plus p2 minus pi plus p3 minus pi, but not every one of them will appear. Suppose p3 is not connected to pi, then that will not appear here because there is this restriction. The only if j is a neighbor of i will this appear. So, this is exactly this, right? So, now if I solve this differential equation subject to let us say my initial conditions p0, okay, let us just call it some p0 belonging to some r2n, yeah? What do you think is the solution of this going to look like? Let us say p is not it equal to p of t is not it equal to summation c i e to the lambda i t v i i going from 1 through n, yeah, where lambda i is at the eigenvalues of the Laplacian, v i is at the eigenvectors of the Laplacian. This is just linear differential equations, theory of linear differential equations, okay. I am not going to go very deep into this because if you, if you have done a course on control theory or about to do, you will learn this anyway. It is basically ordinary differential equations at the end of the day. If you like, you can also write this as e to the at times x naught or p naught. That is also another representation. We have seen the 2 by 2 case by the way, just before we started our uh, you know venture into this eigenvalues and eigenvectors, we have already seen at least a 2 by 2 case. So, the same thing holds for the n by n case. So, it is an nth order differential equation, right? Linear differential equation. So, this is the solution. 
where how do you solve for these C's? The C's are solved essentially by using the initial conditions. See how do you solve differential equations? You get a solution with some constants. How do you evaluate the constants? Because you know the initial condition. So you equate them at the initial condition by putting t is equal to 0. But there is something more interesting here. We are going to assume that this Laplacian is a connected graph. After all, if there is multiple discrete groups which are not even communicating with each other, then there is no point in modeling the motion of ants or vehicles in that group, in such groups, right? So we will assume that G is a connected graph. So if G is a connected graph, what do we know about the eigenvalues of minus L? The eigenvalues of L will be non-negative. One of them exactly 0 and no more than 1 must be 0 because it is a connected graph. So I might as well write this as C1 lambda 1 is just 0. So e to the lambda 1 is also a constant, right? So C1 V1. What is V1? Isn't it the all ones vector? We've just seen that, right? The kernel of Laplacian is spanned by the all ones vector, right? So this is just the all ones vector, right? Plus C2 e to the lambda 2 t v2 plus so on till Cn e to the lambda n t vn. Right? I do not care if the lambdas are distinct or not. This matrix L is always going to be diagonalizable. If it is diagonalizable, then there is going to be no terms such as T or T squared appearing here because there is the Jordan form. The Jordan form is just the diagonal form, right? So we will see that in some greater detail also. So I will just do a couple of steps and you will be there with the result. There are multiple ways of getting at this and I am never sure which is the most convenient way to explain but let us just hold on to that thought for a moment. So what is this? From this can I not write this as V1, V2 or rather this is all ones. If I know it already let us not pretend as if I do not know. V1, V2 like this. Actually you know what? I will just write this as X and get rid of the because otherwise it is going to be of size 2n, right? The dynamics along the x direction mimics the dynamics along the y direction, no? Because p is just 2 tuple of x and y. So let me just because I am convenient dealing with the 1n, the n sized, right? So let us just call this the x. The y direction dynamics is exactly the same except that the initial conditions have to be different. If I know how to solve the x direction, I know how to solve the y direction, the decoupled, right? So let us just call it this until Vn, I am just writing it in a different fashion but make sure that this is going to be 1, this is going to be e to the lambda 2t, this is going to be e to the lambda nt times c1, c2 until cn, right? <coughs> now what are these c's? How do we evaluate these c's? We know that x0 is equal to what? If I equate x0 here and x0 here, what happens? So we know that x0 is equal to c1 all ones plus c2 at 0 the exponentials will not matter c2 v2 plus dot 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 till Cn Vn, which is nothing but all ones n V2 until Vn followed by C1, C2, Cn, which means that C1, C2 until Cn is nothing but the all ones V2. I mean what I am doing here is very standard. I am not using any property of the Laplacian. This is just standard for any mate, any Laplacian. Here I just happen to know that this is all ones. You could have just replaced this with V1. This result is very generic. Inverse times let us say 
x 0, x 0 is a vector right. So, I might as well replace this here. So, I might as well replace this here with all ones n v 2 until v n and then this with 1 e to the lambda 2 t e to the lambda n t and then the c 1 I am going to replace with. So, what do we know about this matrix? This is a matrix of the Eigen vectors of the Laplacian is not it. So, it is an orthogonal matrix. What do you know about its inverse? It is just the transpose of this fellow. So, I might as well just write this as transposed V2 transposed till Vn transposed times sorry not C1 times x naught yeah this is clear so far this inverse because this inverse is just going to be its transpose because it is the so this is the special case up until this point there was nothing special that I harnessed remember just any matrix this it comes out to this form and that is why you actually have this case right e to the at you diagonalize this is just the diagonalized form of that. This is true of any general matrix here I just happen to know that one of the eigenvalues is 0 and its corresponding eigenvector is this apart from that I also know that the other eigenvectors are form an orthogonal basis right. So, that is all the knowledge I have used. So, let us write it out now. So, x of t is going to be all ones n v 2 until v n times 1 e to the lambda 2 t e to the lambda n t the lambdas are the eigenvalues of minus l remember not l yeah because our dynamics was governed by minus Laplacian not Laplacian and what is this? This is just all ones transposed x naught v 2 transposed x naught until v n transposed x naught agreed. So, as t tends to infinity that is the asymptotic behavior of the system what happens to x t? What happens to all of these fellows as t tends to infinity? What do we know the Laplacian to be? Positive semi definite only one eigenvalue is 0 the others are all positive. What do we know about the eigenvalues of minus Laplacian then? Exactly 1 0 all others are negative. So, these lambdas are all negative as t tends to infinity each of these degenerates to 0. So, we essentially have just all ones n v 2 until v n and this just leaves with just this one and this huge vacuum here and just sorry all 1 n transposed x naught v 2 transposed x naught v n transposed x naught right. What do you think this is going to do? If I hit it with this it is not going to matter what these are. All that is going to matter is just this and then this is going to be operated on by this right. So, what is this? This is going to be equal to what is this by the way? When you take the inner product of x uh, 1 1 all 1's vector with x naught what results? It is just the sum of the initial conditions of the fellows right. So, this is equal to the summation of x i 0 yeah ok. So, I think I had to actually normalize this right I had to actually normalize this otherwise it is not the identity no. So, wherever I have missed this I am sorry about this because otherwise it is not an ortho normal matrix right yeah I should have taken the normalized fellows instead of just this. Yeah, otherwise it does not match with the average that I have in mind. <laughs> so, that is how I detected that there was something amiss here because these are all unit norm right only then they give the identity. So, we have an orthonormal basis. So, what do we what, what happens then? This is just this but that is a scalar times the all n all ones right that is your final solution as t tends to infinity 
it just converges to the average of the initial conditions of all the fellows. So if you have a connected graph of people listening to each other, exchanging information without malice or biases, everyone will eventually come to agreement on an average. Now whether you like it or not is up to you. You might say, oh, the, the good people are getting more mediocre, but also the weaker people are getting stronger. The good or bad, I leave it to you, but that's it. That is where consensus or agreement will happen, okay, at the average of the initial conditions when the graph is connected, okay. You can tweak around with the final value if you have a directed graph, but with an undirected graph, it's always going to be the average, right. So we'll end this lecture here today and in the next and the final lecture, we shall try to see another application of this perhaps in the domain of economics. Thank you.